All right, so now we're going to talk about trust region methods. And um, essentially, the idea behind trust region methods is to combine the um, sort of local superconvergence properties of Newton methods with the um, guaranteed global convergence of line search methods. All right, so the goal is to sort of combine the local superconvergence properties or uh, superlinear convergence. sort of Newton methods with the global convergence properties. <coughs> sort of line search methods. Okay, um, and, and part of the problem basically is that if you if you just start with Newton methods, uh, they're not guaranteed to converge, right? So Newton methods are not guaranteed to converge. Uh, <coughs> Certainly globally. Um, <laughs> and it is possible to um, <coughs> it's possible to construct um, sort of problems. It's like where the Newton methods, it's like for which or well, the initial conditions for which the Newton method fails to converge, um, is an open subset. the Newton method fails to converge. It's an open subset. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, so what we want to do basically is to embed uh, the Newton method in some sort of descent method, right? So we want to I guess one way to sort of think about this is that you could, for example, use the Newton search direction. It's like as a search direction in a, a line search method. Um, but you have to modify the, so, so you basically I should say that you can modify sort of the Newton method um, so that the uh, sequence of Newton search directions are gradient related. which, of course, if you recall, uh, was one of the properties uh, you wanted your um, <coughs> line search method to have, right, in order for you to have this global convergence property, okay? Um, and yeah, and, and so the, the basic point is that if you start with the general Newton method it's, and you look at the Newton lines, sorry, Newton search directions, uh, these directions are not always gradient related. So you have to, you have to tweak the, um, 
<coughs> the method slightly, it's like in order to guarantee that. Uh, and if you recall, it had to do sort of with whether or not the uh, the Hessian, it's like was, um, you know, it's like was positive semi-definite, uh, positive definite, basically, right? Um, and, and if it wasn't, then you somehow needed to modify that um, by, by some amount so that you had a positive definite matrix which you're inverting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the yeah okay so I, I should also mention that the the other issue of course is that the uh, Newton method doesn't really distinguish it's like between different types of uh, extremizers it's like like saddle points uh, minima or maxima okay um, and so if you if you sort of embed it's like the Newton method in one of these uh, line search type methods, uh, then the practical reality is that you would end up getting a method now um, for which the saddle points and local maxima are unstable, um, which would then favor convergence to local minimizers. Okay, so doing this sort of renders <coughs> sort of saddle points And local maxima unstable, right? Which then favors convergence to local minima. Okay. All right. Um, so, so the point is that you know it's like the um, the desire to combine it's like the favorable properties it's like both line search methods in terms of their global convergence properties uh, with Newton methods uh, in particular with their superlinear it's like and oftentimes quadratic uh, convergence rates uh, leads to um, what we call trust region methods. Okay, so. Um, Stop erasing this. <coughs> okay, so this leads to the introduction of lights, uh, sorry, of uh, trust region methods. So the best way perhaps to think of trust region methods is that um, instead of thinking of looking at the, uh, you know, it's like the, <coughs> yep, instead of thinking of the update vector, right, so instead of thinking The update vector. In terms um, of sort of these gradient related directions. What you want to do is to think of the Newton method um, as um, of the Newton method as basically um, <coughs> going to the um, sort of critical points of a local model of the cost function, right? Generating a sequence of iterates um, 
which sort of map to the critical point. of the local quadratic model, right? Of the cost function. Okay. All right, so, so you probably already know that the Newton method, it's like when you're trying to find the zeros, it's like an, of a function involved taking uh, a first order approximation so first order Taylor approximation of that cost function and looking at the zero of that first order approximation. Okay, um, when that function which you're trying to find the zero of is the gradient, it's like of a scalar valued function, then uh, the Newton method corresponds to taking that scalar valued function and replacing it with a second order Taylor approximation at that point, and then you know going to the uh, extremizer uh, or critical point, it's like of that quadratic function. Okay, so that's that's basically uh, what's happening here. Um, so the basic idea then it's like is that we would like to generalize this as before. It's like two manifolds. Okay, uh, and the way we're going to do this uh, is via, um, as you might expect, it's like using the retractions. Okay. So um, to sort of do this. Manifold, right? We use retractions, right, to construct <coughs> local quadratic models. At um, each tangent space to the manifold. Okay, so basically, what's going to happen is that you're going to use the retractions. It's like, and the retractions are then going to, um, <coughs> you know, it's like allow you to think of some scalar value function. It's like on a tangent space, which is of course uh, some abstract vector space. Okay, so what makes this a little bit complicated is that um, you you have um, you you have these. It's like local models. It's like but they're defined at each tangent space. So there's not a, a single space. It's like where you think of them as living, um, and and that does sort of complicate the analysis a little bit. Um, but nevertheless, the, the basic concept is, is not so hard to understand, right? That you are on a manifold. It's like you use the retraction to identify some neighborhood. It's like a point um, on this manifold with the tangent spaces. And on that tangent space, you have some sort of quadratic function, uh, which is in some sense an approximation of the local representative of that cost function uh, in that, uh, with respect to that retraction. Okay, um, and then you use your you know, it's like you look at the critical points of that uh, local quadratic function, uh, local quadratic model, and, and you use that to construct uh, the next iterate, if you will. Okay, so, so that's sort of the, the essential idea uh, behind these trust region methods. Um, and then what we're going to do basically is that we're going to um, first study uh, local quadratic models. It's like both uh, in Rn, it's like, and then uh, in sort of general, it's like Euclidean spaces. And then with that general setting, we then talk about how to do this uh, on Riemannian manifold via an appropriate choice of a retraction. Okay, um, so, um, so the next steps again are as to study sort of these uh, local quadratic models. All right, so let me just stop here for now and second, then we'll, we'll talk about quadratic models in a bit.